Here is my husband, Ricky, to read chapter 3. So subscribe to hear the rest of it. So let's get started. Let's take a close look at this thing to make sure there's no mistake. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority, Revelation 13 2. Imperial Justina gave the power of Rome to the Pope when he decreed that the Pope should be over all the Christian churches of the earth. The papacy was established in 538 AD when the Emperor's General Belarius drove the Ostrogens from Rome. Rome gave him his seat. Bible prophecy predicted hundreds of years before it happened. From 538 AD, the papacy ruled for exactly 1260 years until 1798. When something incredible happened, the Pope was taken prisoner. Napoleon's general, Berthier, captured the Pope and took him to France. He later died. A deadly wound. The papacy had reigned exactly 1260 years. Could it have been just a coincidence? Why did Berthier do it? Napoleon wanted to rule the world. The papacy stood in his way. I wonder if they knew they were fulfilling prophecy in spite of themselves. And his deadly, deadly wound was healed in all the world wandered after the beast, Revelation 13, 3. In 1929, the Italian government recognized Vatican City as an independent state. Once again, the Pope was king. On March 9, 1929, he said, The peoples of the entire world are with us. The San Francisco Chronicle published an account of the pact signing on the front page of its newspaper. It actually read like this, Mussolini and Gospia signed historic pact. He'll wound of many years. That is fantastic. The Bible predicted that his wound would be healed, and the newspaper confirmed it in the exact same words. Though this great organization was not officially established until 538 A.D., the Apostle Paul saw forces at work that were preparing the way. What was going on back there, he could have seen. Here's what happened. After Jesus went back to heaven, the early church grew rapidly under the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had predicted the treatment that his people were to receive. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Matthew 24 and 9. That was literally fulfilled. Look at this amazing account. Their excursion was made into a game, wrote Tactius, describing the persecutions under Nero. They were covered with the skins of wild animals and tore to pieces by dogs. They were hung on crosses. They were burned. Wrapped in flammable material set on fire to illuminate the night. To escape death, they had but to redoliate Christ and sacrifice to the emperor. Some did. Many more were tortured to death rather than deny their lord. Paganism foresaw that this should be the gospel trump. Her temples and altars would be swept away. Therefore, she summoned her forces to destroy Christianity. Christians were stripped of their possessions and driven from their homes. Great numbers sealed their testimony with their blood. Noble and slave, rich and poor, learned and ignorant, were alike slain without mercy. Beneath the hills outside the city of Rome, long galleries had been tunneled through the earth and rock. The dark and entrice network of passages extended for miles beyond the city walls. In those underground retreats, the followers of Christ buried their dead. But here also they suspected they found a home. Many were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection, Hebrews 11 and 35. They rejoiced that they were accounted worthy to suffer for the truth, and songs of Trump ascended from the midst of the crackling flames. Satan couldn't wipe them out for years. Emperors Nero and Dicentian slaughtered them by the thousands. You may kill us, torture us, condemn us, said one Christian to his persecutors. Your injustice is the proof that we are innocent. Tertium Apology, Par 50, until 313 A.D., it was against the law to be a Christian. Such a person was an automatic criminal, but the followers of Jesus spread everywhere. Satan could see that he had had to change his tactics. He would come up with a better scheme. What could the devil think of that would be better than killing Christians? Make things easy and infiltrate. Like a wise general, he would corrupt the church from the inside. Watch what happens. A great shout goes up to the emperor. Emperor Constantine has become a Christian. The Christians are euthoric. No more being torn apart by dogs and lions or used to dupes to be cut in cold blood or human torches to light up the arena for the gladiators. Now Christianity is the state religion. Things are going great, or so it seems. 
But little by little, as everyone relaxes and quits worried about being tortured to death, something happens. Compromise. Gradually, the leaders, for the sake of popularity and gain, let down the standards to make it easier for the pagans to come into the church. But this brings in errors in pagan customs. Not at all surprised by Satan's scheme to corrupt his church from within, God gives us a fair warning. Listen to Paul's shocking words. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day of the Lord shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or all that is worship, or that is as God set it from the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Second Thessalonians 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. Oh yes, he saw it coming. The mysterious work of corruption rapidly progressed after the death of the last apostle. Question, what happened? After persecution ceased, Satan's great device was to control the leaders of the church. If he could infiltrate inflate their ego, make them money hungry, the whole body would be affected. The popularity contest would be on to get as many heathen to accept Christianity as possible. The wealth and prestige of the church would grow. Who cares if you have to change the Bible somewhat to get them? Just introduce some of the heathen customs and rights into Christianity and give them Christian names, and the heathen will flock in. Of all horrors, that's just what happened. The apostles had gone throughout the empire, establishing churches in many cities. As time went by, smaller churches were built in the surrounding county sides. The large centers were all Jerusalem, Rome, and Alexandria, Egypt. Rome finally emerged on top. The next step in the plot was for the church leaders to get control of the state to help enforce their decrees. They achieved this beyond their wildest dreams. The of this came in, in 538 A.D., the entire city of Rome was handed over to the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. For the next 1260 years, church leaders reigned with full civil authority, all just as predicted in prophecy. Incredible. But look at this shocker. It says that the beast has the name of blasphemy, Revelation 13 and 1. It became one of the leading doctrines of the church that it's Visible head is invested with supreme authority over bishops and pastors in all parts of the world. More than this, it took the very name of God. He was addressed as Lord God the Pope and decreed to be infallible. For documentation, see Appendix 3. He demands the worship of all men. What about 666? Let's take a shocking look. On the Pope's official metry has been seen in the title, Victor. Curious FDI, which means Vicar of the Son of God. The claim that is this official title has been stated publicly throughout the years. The April 18, 1915 issue of our Sunday Visitor states, The letters inscribed in the Pope's mitre are those Vicarious Filia Dia, which in Latin for Vicar of the Son of God. In Revelation 13:18 it says, Count the number of the beasts. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. I want to be quick to say that when a person shares his shocking revelations, he must be kind and tactful. We must let people know what that God loves all. The truth must be told, but always in kindness. The twelve hundred and sixty years of the papacy's rule are called the Dark Ages. I'm sure you've heard that expression before. The reason it was so dark is because the priests fallible forbid anyone in, to read or even have a Bible. For hundreds of years, only the priests were allowed to read Bibles. Satan had to get the Bibles away from the people in order to keep them in darkness and superstition. The people just didn't know any better. There was a time when if you were caught with a Bible, you were dragged out of your home, hung up on a pole, and burned alive in your front yard. For documentation, see Appendix 4. What John sees next is so unbelievable that he is stunned.